and welcome back to a lovely morning out here in the pines. Absolutely gorgeous. This video is all about hammocks. It will come as no surprise to you if you've been watching the channel for a while um, and have seen my previous sort of gear comparison videos that I have a few hammocks <laughs> that I've bought and acquired over the years. So I thought I would just go through the hammocks that I use weigh them up against one another, pros and cons, and hopefully give you a bit of an idea about some of the models that are out there that might suit your needs. The hammocks I'm gonna show you vary hugely in their design and in their price. Um, I'm gonna start off with the, with the basic sort of budget entry level hammocks if you like. They're, they're simple, um, but being simple, they're also light because there's less material, there's less going on, there's less, less features. Um, but you know, if you are just starting out, want to you know, want to give hammocking a go. Not sure how you'll get on. It's not for everybody. Um, you know, a lot of people don't don't find them comfortable. Um, but you know, it might be a, a, a good route to go down if you don't want to spend a huge amount of money just to see how you get on. Um, likewise, if you live in a um, an area where insects aren't an issue, the budget ones generally don't have mosquito nets or anything like that. So um, yeah, let's take a look. I've got two to show you. One from Eagles Nest Outfitters and one from DD. This is the single nest hammock from ENO, Eagles Nest Outfitters. Um, they do a double version of this as well. Um, and it's a very simple single layer, I think it's polyester hammock gathered at the ends um, with a loop and they provide you with a carabiner. Um, if you want suspension, you have to buy that uh, as an extra. It doesn't come with it, um, but you do get a little stuff sack with a compression strap on it. So you can cinch it down, make it nice and small and the stuff sack actually is attached to the hammock so you can't lose it but also it's a handy place just to store stuff you know it just hangs there by the side of your hammock and you can pop your phone or your keys or whatever you want in there and if you do the strap up you can then hang stuff from it as well if you want to keep your shoes up off the ground you could just tie your laces together um, hang them off the strap there it's quite a nice little feature you have to take a bit more care when setting up these gathered end hammocks um, if you pull them too tightly, it creates ridges in the fabric which can be a bit more uncomfortable um, unlike the, uh, the hammocks which have a structural ridge line inside them you can't really go wrong with those, you, you know, you can pull them as tight as you want and they'll always hang how they're supposed to these ones you have to make sure you get the angle right in order for them to be, to be comfortable Being a basic single layer hammock, it's also the lightest of the hammocks I'm going to show you today um, weighs about 450 grams as it is out of the bag um, it bumps up to about 550 with the suspension that I've added, uh, but still, you know, pretty light. So if you're backpacking and, um, you know, weight is a consideration and size is a consideration because it does back down pretty small, um, this might be the way to go. This is the DD camping hammock, um, and this was my main hammock for ages I've had it a long long time um, my kids have then got on to use it it's, yeah it's been it's had lots of use probably more use than any of my other hammocks um, for sure just because I've had it for such a long time this is their basic entry entry level model this is an, obviously an old model now I think they've upgraded it slightly there's a few more features on it now to, to how it was when I bought it but this is how it was when yeah all those years ago <laughs> when I bought it. Um, it's a double layered hammock, unlike the ENO that I showed you a minute ago, and it's got a zip so that you can gain access to that space between the two layers, which is great because you can put insulation in there. You could put a sleeping pad or whatever in there for insulation in the winter. Um, and uh, you don't have to worry about it slipping out from underneath you, it stays put, which is a really good feature. I've actually slept in there um, between the two layers. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing it. It's not designed to be done to be to be uh, slept in but I have done that just to kind of close it in on me uh, in some bad weather once and um, and it was fine left obviously a, a gap up where my mouth was where my head was for uh, ventilation for breathing but yeah you may recognize this if you've if you've seen my Land Rover conversion video because this is now the hammock that goes in my Land Rover um, fits in there a treat I've put some some little eyes at the front and at the back and it hangs in there so that's now my Land Rover hammock they don't cost a lot of money and um, yeah, well, I've had it a long time and it's and it's lasted and uh, it has been through quite a lot of abuse. So, um, yeah, not a bad starter hammock for sure. DD camping hammock. Moving on in levels of sophistication, <laughs> um, we've got the green Hornet hammock here from 10th Wonder. Um, sadly, this hammock is no longer made, um, which I think is a crying shame because it was a really good hammock. And uh, this was my first kind of proper hammock, serious hammock with 
built in bug net and all the rest of it. Um, I'm showing you it because I have it, um, but also they do pop up from time to time on eBay um, and I think it would be a you know worthwhile uh, purchase if one did at the right price for sure. They, they are a decent hammock. It's double layered underneath um, and there is access to it through a zip um, and you can put your insulation underneath just like you can on the um, on the DD hammock I showed you a minute ago. So that's a good feature and then you have another zip here to gain access into the into the sleeping area which is inside that bug net there. So you can sleep in there comfortably and keep all those flying insects at bay. Inside there's plenty of room. I'm just shy of six foot and I fit in here really comfortably. Um, there's only one zip for entry so you can't get rid of the uh, mosquito net. It's, it's attached along one side. So you've only got you know access really in and out. You can't tie it up out the way um, if you wanted that extra breeze, but I've not found that to be a problem. And then at one end, you've got a little storage uh, pocket for keeping your keys and bits and bobs safe while you're in your hammock. On the top of the hammock, you've got an aluminium spreader bar, which is attached to a bit of bungee, a bit of elastic there. So you can hang that up to your ridge line or up to your suspension, and that just keeps it all up and off your face. Um, one of the features I love is that the end little triangle here is nylon and not the mesh. Uh, it gives you a lot more protection from the wind. Um, you know, you've got your tarp over the top. If the wind is blowing through the tarp, then that wind is coming into your hammock unless you've got some protection. So that gives you a little bit of a buffer from that cold wind of you using it in the winter. This hammock is the DD Frontline. And if you've been watching for a while, you'll have seen me use this on, on lots of videos. Um, it's a good hammock. It's got the built-in bug net. It's got similar features to the uh, Tenth Wonder Green Hornet. Um, it's double layered underneath and you've got a Velcro access to put your insulation in there if that's what you want to do if you're not going to be using an under blanket. I personally prefer an under blanket. Um, it just envelops you a bit more from underneath, gives you um, a bit more protection and because it's on the outside it doesn't get squashed. Um, but you know Everybody has their own personal preferences. A cheaper op option is certainly, you know, like a foam roll mat or something in there. Um, yeah, two zipped access doors, one on each side. You can open up the other side and um, bunch that up to the top there. And then you've got basically an open hammock then. So for warm, balmy evenings where there aren't any biting insects about, you can get a bit more airflow, which is nice. It's nice and roomy inside and you've got storage pockets on both sides at the foot end and at the head end. To keep that netting off your face, there's a little fiberglass spreader bar, which just lives in that little sleeve at the top there. There's one at the head end and one at the foot end, and that just yeah keeps it all away from your face. So you've got that nice feeling of space inside without loads of mosquito netting flopping onto you. So here we've got the first of my structural ridgeline hammocks. Um, the idea behind these is that there's a line which runs from the front to the back of the hammock, or from the head to the foot end, and that pre-sets the hang of the hammock. So no matter how tightly you pull this to the tree, um, that hammock will always hang in the correct shape. It's also cut differently. So rather than having a rectangle of fabric which is all gathered together at the end like the previous hammocks, this one is cut to that shape. So you don't have all that bunching and you don't have that ridging which goes on underneath you in the other hammocks if you don't hang them correctly. Um, just much better. The ridge line holds the mosquito nut up and off your face and you can flip it over if you want to sit in it and just, you know, relax. Um, you can do that or you can just, you know, have it off you completely. The choice is yours. Um, this one is made by, by Ginge. You'll, you'll know Ginge if you've been watching for a while, my buddy Ginge. Um, he makes all sorts of gear and this is one of his. One of his. I'll put a link to his um, Instagram uh, below. That's probably the best way of contacting him um, if you want him to, to make you one. Um, this is really light, weighs about 550 grams, um, which is brilliant for an all-in-one hammock. It's only single skin and he's used really lightweight materials, but I've used this a few, I've used this a few times and I've not had any issues with it. It's plenty strong enough. Yeah, really good hammock. Full length zip along one side, and I've added little attachment toggles so that I can suspend my hammock underquilt. There's heaps of space in here, so it's really nice and comfortable. 
and it allows you to sleep slightly on the diagonal, which means you can get a bit more flat, which I know a lot of people prefer. And then down at the foot end, don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this, but there's a cord which you can adjust, and that's an adjustable foot box. It kind of creates a hook in the hammock here, and you can tuck your feet into it, and it's, it's really comfortable. <laughs> Inside, it's got a neat little storage pocket here, so you can keep all your bits and pieces organized, and that just slides along the ridge line so you can put it to wherever you want inside your hammock. This one is a Hennessy hammock. I think it was the Explorer ASIM Deluxe, maybe? I can't really remember. I bought it secondhand. Um, and it's one of those with the weird bottom entry Velcro jobby on the bottom there. So you climb in and out from underneath and then you're born again every morning <laughs> as you emerge from that, that uh, opening there. Um, it's a good system, I like it, it's easy to get in and out of, um, but it doesn't work so well for me because I use an under blanket, as I said about before, and that basically closes off that opening, so you can't, you know, you get out of that bit and you're still inside your, inside your under blanket, so that wasn't really working for me. Um, so I added a zip, I've got a, a video on how to do this, um, they don't come with a zip, although you can buy Hennessy hammocks that do have zips. Mine just didn't, like I said, I bought it second hand. So adding the zip wasn't too difficult and it just means that I can get in and out um, just as I can uh, on the previous hammock that I showed you. It just works better for me. And I kept the Velcro opening underneath um, just in case, you know, if I'm using it in the summer or whatever, I don't need insulation, then um, I can still use that if I want to. It's got that internal structural ridge line. So again, you haven't got to worry about how you hang it up, just pull it between two trees and it'll always hang in the correct shape and the fabric is cut to that shape so it tapers up towards each end and you don't get all that gathering underneath. Um, what makes this hammock different to a lot is that it's cut asymmetrically so the center of the each side if you like is off center from one another. Does that make sense? So you can lie in it on the diagonal and you get a much more flat lay and then you can peg out or tie out those center points if you want, although I don't generally bother. Now, the problem with hammocks and what puts a lot of people off is not being able to get comfortable. If you're a side sleeper or you like to sleep on your front, it's very difficult to do that in a hammock just because of the, the shape of them. You know, it lends itself to you sleeping on your back. Um, as I showed you with the last two hammocks, by sleeping diagonally, you can almost get flat, but it's still not it's still not perfect. I've found I can kind of sleep on my side in one of those hammocks. Okay, I don't know about sleeping on my front. I think that would give you a pretty bad backache, to be honest. The next hammock I'm going to show you is a revolutionary design. The Norwegian company Amok have completely redesigned the hammock. Normally you lie in line with the hammock, you know, your feet pointing at one tree that you're suspended from, your head pointing at the other. They've switched it around so you're lying across. You are at right angles to the normal lay. And what that does is it creates a platform where you can sleep perfectly flat. It's a very clever design. Let me take you in for a look. So here it is. This is the Drauma Ultralight Hammock. I think it's pronounced Drauma, something like that. But as you can see, the sleeping platform runs this way. I'm hung from two trees, one there and one just behind me. And I'm sleeping across perpendicular to that line. Um, the sleeping platform is uh, an air mattress which you which you blow up with a pump sack and then you slip that into a sleeve at the foot end and it creates this platform so it gives the hammock its form it gives you comfort and it gives you insulation this is a three season rated um, mattress in here they do a four season one as well so that's basically uh, the shape of it you sleep in that way and it creates a completely flat lay so I can sleep on my front on my side on my back whatever I want and I'm gonna be comfortable, however. It'd be like sleeping on the ground, but more comfortable. Um, there's also a sitting mode, so you can adjust some straps inside and it kind of kinks the, 
the, uh, the shape of the hammock and provides you with a sitting position. So you can sit in there and drink or make your breakfast, read a book, admire the view, whatever it is um, from a sitting position, which is, which is really, really nice. Once you're in the hammock, there's a full-size bug net, which just zips around. You can, you can reach the zip all the way around from, from inside the hammock, and that protects you from any midges. That goes over the ridge line at the top of the hammock and keeps it up. And then there are pockets where you can either put a stick or one of Amok's own spreader bars in at the foot end and the head end, and that just lifts it all up. It's massive. It's like a palace inside when you're in there. There are pockets everywhere. There are pockets that are big enough to take a Nalgene bottle, um, pockets where you can put your phone, pockets where you can store bits of clothing or whatever gear. There's, there's a kind of shelf on either side high up. One of them the um, mosquito net stores in when it's not in use, but when it's deployed, you can just use that to stuff bits of kit in. Really good, very, very cleverly thought out. The suspension is really well designed. It's color coded. So you've got red for left port and green for right starboard. Just means setting it up is easy. Just, you know, you can orientate it because obviously there's a foot end and a head end. So you want to make sure it's around the right way for your view or however, you, however it is you want to set it up. I've also got the tarp that goes with this hammock. Amok make a tarp specifically for this. It's a, it's a special shape kind of bat wing shape but longer on one side than the other so it fits over the the shape of you in the hammock and again it's all really well thought out color coded port and starboard so you can't get it the wrong way around everything reinforced just really really good they are on the pricey side but you get what you pay for absolutely you won't find these features on any other hammock that's for sure yeah i absolutely love it cracking bit of kit Well, folks, those are the hammocks that I use. Um, I'm not saying that they're the best ones you can buy or, or anything like that. There are, there are loads of companies out there making hammocks, really good hammocks. Um, you know, Dutchware, uh, Warbonnet, knapsack hammocks, load, loads of different uh, companies. Um, uh, I just haven't got any of their hammocks. <laughs> so I can only show you what I've got and I've chosen all these on their various merits. But um, hopefully it's been useful, giving you a, a, a bit of an idea about certainly these ones. Maybe, uh, you know, helps you make a choice. Um, you know, we all have our personal, um, you know, our personal favourites when it comes to gear, don't we? That's just the way it is. But uh, hopefully it's been useful and I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.